Ladies and gentlemen, we finally have some real, yes, some real NBA 2K24 news to go over. We have the Pro Play gameplay trailer. We also have some exclusive interviews with Mike Wang where he talks about gameplay changes and what to look for going into NBA 2K24. So drop a like on the video and let's start off with the new Pro Play gameplay features. So what is Pro Play and how is it supposed to change 2K? So Pro Play is essentially they are taking animations straight from the real games that these players are playing. So, in hopes that it makes the game look more realistic, but also it should be able to add in a lot of new animations, and I hope that transfers over to the park for us park players, but it should add authenticity, especially to, you know, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, all these NBA players that you're watching in the trailer right now, it should make their animations more real. Now, what's the difference between mocap and pro play? Essentially, mocap is when they bring someone in and they do, basically, they record animations in a controlled environment as opposed to pro play where they're recording these animations straight out of the game you know what i mean it's like you're shooting around in your driveway or you're playing in an nba game there's a big difference in the intensity and just the way the moves look and and all those little details so it should add a level of realism to 2k that we haven't seen before now they did this in fifa i believe i don't know if it's this year or the year prior and essentially, you know, they, they were recording things like sprint animations and they used to have like, I don't know, let's say 10 or 20 sprint animations for star players. Then they went to 1200 different sprinting animations for every player out there because they could record it from the game itself. They didn't have to bring these guys into mocap it. They could record it while they were actually playing in the game. Now, as I mentioned, I really hope these animations are able to transfer over to the park and the rec and pro-am because I just feel like at times yes there's a lot of animations in the game but some are just so much better than others that you and everyone ends up using relatively the same animations depending on the height of your build and there's just not many things to choose from to not lose that competitive advantage hopefully we're pro play we get a bunch of animations that are all usable and it just adds a level of variety and diversity not only for casual players but for competitive players as well and i mean looking at these clips when you put them side by side with you know the real clips it does look really nice now how does that transfer over to online gameplay we'll have to wait and see but adding in pro play to nba 2k24 looks like we're moving in the right direction but let's move on mike wang talked about dribbling Let's check this interview out. Shooting has been customized and improved for all various modes, difficulties, and player skill levels. But in order to get high percentage shots, you need to know how to create separation off the dribble. One of my favorite elements in NBA 2K24 is the dribble breakdowns. Each player has two versions. Regular breakdowns are done by flicking up on the right analog stick, and aggressive breakdowns are done by flicking up with sprint held. This will initiate a sequence of signature size up moves that you can use to create separation with on their own or branch out of at any time for an explosive drive or other double move combo. This year features all new signature double crosses, hezi crosses, and escape moves. Another major addition is the blowout dribble. Tapping the sprint trigger while moving will give you a quick burst of speed where the ball handler pushes the ball ahead to get out quickly on the break. In the front court, tapping sprint will give you a quick change of pace to quickly blow by defenders. Adrenaline boosts are back, but have been redesigned to make both offense and defense more skill-based. On offense, boosts are no longer lost when pulling off dribble combos or moving short distances. This gives dribblers much more freedom to create off the bounce. But boosts will disappear every time the on-ball defender can bump the ball handler on a drive attempt. Losing adrenaline won't feel like moving in mud like last year, but it will heavily impact shooting attributes. So if a good defender can bump the dribbler two or three times in a single possession, they'll have a really tough time scoring if they do manage to get free. Creating your own shot off the dribble isn't the only way to get good shots. Knowing how to operate away from the ball is just as important. NBA 2K24 features new right analog stick jukes and other quick explosive moves to free yourself up for a shot. Tapping the sprint trigger will also give you a huge burst of speed to find open spots on the floor for spot up jumpers or easy rim runs for dunks. And adrenaline boosts have been such a big talking point in the community. I wanted to put this in here, this, this little paragraph or two from the article that was written just to, you know, if you want to read a little bit more about it, but essentially Mike Wayne touched on it. Dribble combos and short distances will not cost adrenaline boosts anymore. And, you know, like I said, if you want more info, it's right there. But he also went on and he talked about defense. All right. So this has been a big talking point. Paint defense, perimeter defense, lockdown, steals, all that stuff. Let's hear what he had to say about defense. Defensive movement has improved on many fronts with better responsiveness and less sliding. 
This helps defenders get where they need to be, and with the improved body up system, ball handlers will have a tough time getting free against great defenders. The improved contact can also be felt in the paint. Big defensive anchors will have a much easier time putting a body on shooters at the rim and forcing tough shots. Directional steals are also back. You need to reach with the correct hand closest to the ball and avoid reaching across the body to maximize success and avoid foul calls. You can also use directional steals to play passing lanes by flicking the right stick in the correct direction to get your hand in the way and deflect the pass. And when it comes to contesting shots, it's important to be patient and wait for the correct time to jump. If you're behind the shooter, jumping too early, biting on fakes, or closing out late, you'll quickly find yourself racking up fouls and giving up and one opportunities. Everything about offense, defense, and coaching has been streamlined to make NBA 2K24 more enjoyable for all. And within the article, here's a quick little summary of, of the defensive stuff, you know, the directional steals they talk about, also talk about, you know, the uh, defensive movement has been improved, the bumps, all that stuff. So if you want to read a little bit more, it's on the screen here, but I want to keep it moving. He then wanted to talk about shooting, dunking, layups, layup timing, shooting timing, your shot release, the new shot release system. Let's check out what he had to say. Players who play on Hall of Fame or comp online games will be playing with green or miss shot timing for the ultimate challenge. But team control modes will see more forgiving shot timing, so you won't have to memorize every single player's release to the exact frame to find success. The shot timing release time setting from NBA 2K23 has been converted to a new setting called Shot Timing Visual Cue. Now you can set your desired release point based on whatever animation cue works best for you. This makes it much easier to play with players and teams you're not as familiar with. Advanced layups like floaters, reverses, euros, hop steps, and scoops are much more effective this year, and I'd encourage everyone to try out layup timing. It's much more forgiving for high percentage layups and also gives you the ability to finish tough circus layups in traffic if you can master it. For dunkers in new gen, you can now force rim hangs from any two-hand dunk by simply keeping the sprint trigger held when the dunker grabs the rim. Down on the pro stick will give you flashy dunks, and up-down or down-up double throws will let you attempt contact dunks in traffic with the dunk meter. Meter dunks are green or miss on higher difficulty levels now, so you have to be precise to finish off the play. Bigs are going to have a lot of fun dominating in the paint in NBA 2K24. You can now branch out of any offensive rebound to a putback attempt by simply pressing the shot button after the catch. Post fades and hop shots are also really effective shots for post players, and you can definitely feel the impact of strength and weight as bigger players easily dominate weaker ones on the glass. Now here's a little recap on the shot timing and layup timing that Mike Wang talked about there. We also have a little snippet where they talk about takeover and the new takeover system. It's completely different than any past 2K. So let's check that out and then I'll give my overall thoughts on the news that we got today. Takeover returns to NBA 2K24, but with a different spin. Instead of assigning a takeover ability as part of the build process, now you can choose a category of attributes to boost on the fly. When you fill up the takeover meter, you can choose between finishing, shooting, playmaking, defense rebounding, or physicals. If you delay your takeover and fill up double takeover, you can choose two different categories of ratings to boost, making you a true threat on both ends of the floor. So in regards to the new takeover system, what I really would have liked is depending on how you're playing, that's the takeover you get. Like if you're grabbing a ton of rebounds, you get rebounding take. If you're dunking the ball all over the place, you get slashing take. I don't like how people can just dunk, 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 and then unlock sharp take. And, and I know like I've done that in the past. We've all done that because it's a thing in the game you can take advantage of. But I don't think realistically and just logically, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? If I'm shooting threes, I should get sharp take. If I'm shooting pull up shots in the mid range or, or whatever, I should get shot creator take. If I'm getting a ton of assists, I should get playmaking take but that's obviously not what they decided to do they went with this takeover system so we'll see how it plays out but let's talk about the news overall so first thing we heard was the new pro play system being implemented i think that is an absolute w i hope it translates to the park and online game modes like i said and i hope it makes for more diverse animation selection being you know being effective enough to be able to use in competitive situations now we also learned a lot about the new defense the new offense the new shooting you know they they're adding in things that they're calling more skill based now will it end up being more skill based we actually have to wait and feel the game and play online and let the best sweaty most cheesiest broken players you know let's let stizo try to dribble and see if he can figure some stuff out and and you know let's let the pro-am you know sweats and the the 
professional 2K League players get in there and see what's going on. But once we actually feel the game and whatnot, then we'll actually see if it is more skill based. But that seems to be the theme of what they're trying to do. And from a fan base, I think we have to appreciate that because at the end of the day, it's a video game. You want it to be skill based. You want it to reward you when you outplay your opponent. That's the main thing. It's frustrating when you feel like your opponent is just relying on one thing that's broken and you know there's not much you can do about it. You want it to be, okay, he's doing this. I can counter with this and then he can counter with that and I can counter with this. And then whoever outplays the other one's going to win the game or win that possession or, or whatever. Y'all get what I'm saying. So hopefully the whole skill based thing is actually going to pan out in the future. But overall, NBA 2K24 for the first like the real first news that we've gotten. It's looking pretty good, man. Let me know what y'all think. Drop a like on the video. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.